Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Shenandoah 2045 day. Every month I meet up on the screen with Tyler Hinkle. Eventually we're going to do something in person again, Tyler, but Zoom seems to work so far for us. We talk every single month about Shenandoah County's comprehensive planning process. We have learned so many things from Citizens Advisory Committee members to all different types of things that go into the planning, the comprehensive planning of Shenandoah 2045. Tyler, I understand today you've got Jenna French with you. She's Director of Tourism and Economic Development for Shenandoah County. Also with us is Brenna Menefee. She is the Zoning and Subdivision Administrator. We're going to talk a little business today because sometimes we get lost in the weeds talking about roads and all of the other things that go into a comprehensive plan. Business is important to having a county that is growing and economically stable. Yeah, I thought today we could spend some time talking about the development review process, what it looks like for a business to get from an idea to something on the ground that people see every day. So we're lucky to have some experts in the room with us today to kind of talk about that process. So happy to do that. Jenna, it's really important from an economic development standpoint, not just that you make sure that the businesses that you have in Shenandoah County are being successful and growing, but it's also important to attract new businesses, no matter how big or small they are, because all of that feeds together in the ecosystem to make everything an overall success. Yeah, absolutely. I know we talk about supporting our existing businesses, the foundation of economic development, right? We want those that are already here or have been here for years and years or that even just opened their doors a year ago to continue to grow and thrive and be successful here, but also looking at what types of businesses fit the goals and objectives of our community to try to attract here that we think will be a good fit for our community as well in the long run. And really our objective with this is At the end of the day, it's all about increasing the quality of life for our residents with higher paying jobs and diversifying the tax base here in Shenandoah County. And Tyler, a lot of the information that you are gathering or that you have gathered so far while you're doing this comprehensive planning process is getting that input from residents and citizens to say these are the types of holes or the gaps that they think businesses could fit well in and where they'd like to be located. Is it difficult trying to pull all that information into one big pot and then sort it back out again the way that you need to understand the information? It's a lot of information to sort through and can't solve all the problems, but I think we're getting a better picture of what the community right now wants to see in the future. I that I think when, when I am doing my job and we're out there recruiting businesses to come to Shenandoah County, Janet, I know you've heard me say this in the past, but like my job isn't to carry out Jenna French's vision of economic development. It is to look at this comprehensive plan and what our residents said they wanted our community to be. And that guides me in making those decisions and determining who's going to be a good fit here and what we want to go after. And then when you start drilling down from that process, you get into things like the development review process where you want to make it as easy as possible for a business that's locating to the area, opening for the first time, relocating, or maybe even a business that has decided to expand or move from one spot in the county to another spot in the county. Tell me about this development review process. How does it work? Let's say, Janet, you're the business developer. You're going to open your coffee shop, radio coffee shop somewhere in the county. So you give us your idea. You give us your pitch of the dream you have with this new business and likely winds up going to the brewery. Yeah. So that business owner, potential business owner, one of their first stops is probably going to be to me, the zoning administrator, the zoning office. And we're going to gather as much information as we can about their proposed business to help them determine if they need a special use permit, a site plan, what other agencies they need to talk to, to see if anything is needed, and then go from there. Sometimes it's a by right use, meaning they don't need a public hearing, they don't need a special use permit, they just need to meet certain regular requirements of the code and they can open up shop. Other times they may need a special use permit and conversations with VDOT and other agencies like that can come into play and we get them in front of the planning commission and board of supervisors eventually. I would think that there's a lot of education. So for Tyler's example, I'm going to open this coffee shop. I may understand that I need to have room for seating. I may even be as advanced to know that if I have parking, I have to have a certain amount of handicap spaces, but I may not necessarily understand if I've never done this before, what I need from a health standard. So I bet you do a lot of educating people who maybe know their business, but don't necessarily know how their business works in the spot maybe that they're looking at. 
Absolutely. And that's one of the helpful things for those of us that when we're here for any period of time, we become familiar with those other agencies like VDOT, Health Department, the Fire Marshal, the Building Official, sometimes even other you know agencies, especially Jenna may be familiar with somebody that we aren't or something. And we're able to get people in touch with each of those individual people so they don't have to just figure it out on their own and figure out who they're supposed to call. We can usually help guide them in those directions, which is something we're always happy to do. And I think the beauty of the technical review team meeting that the county has is that it really brings together all of those agencies around the table for one meeting, which makes the most of that particular business owner's time, but also ensures that we're all on the same page and they're not told by one organization one thing and then sent off to the next guy and told something else. It really helps streamline that process. Because you really want that first introduction of that business to your county to be a good one. You don't want them to walk away thinking, oh my God, that was so much work. Now I'm going to go look somewhere else. You want it to be as seamless and as smooth as possible. Yeah. And I think sometimes it can be a little overwhelming, especially for smaller businesses where they might be starting a business for the first time ever. And you love brewing coffee, for instance, and you've decided you want to open a coffee shop, but you've never done that before and learn about all the steps that are needed. Sometimes that can be a little daunting. And that's where, again, everybody in this room here today on those CRT meetings, our staff in the economic development office are really here to help guide you through that process so that we can give you the right foundation to be successful right off the bat. Is it better if I already have a location in mind or is it better if I come to you while I'm still in the idea stage so you can help me find a location that would work best for what I want to do with it? That's a great question. And I think we see both, right? We have people that come in and they, they've already bought a piece of property and they know what they want to do there. And then we have other people that come to us at a very early stage that just have an idea. And I think that's where the zoning is so important. And I'll let Brenda speak to that, but sometimes it's best to come before you have the location to see what's feasible there. Every now and then we see cases where somebody bought a property without investigating the zoning and what's allowable there, and they find out that what they're looking to do isn't actually feasible, but could have been done somewhere else. They just need to know the proper zoning. So Brenna can probably speak to that better than I can. Yeah, definitely. No, Jenna touched on that perfectly. I get a large number of phone calls to my office from people who are looking at purchasing a certain property, and sometimes they're just looking in the area. But a lot of times they are looking at a specific property that has hit the market and they either are moving from another area where they have this home business and they want to make sure they can start it at this property if they buy it and relocate. Or sometimes it's a larger property that's like industrial zoned or something. But in any of those cases, I try to give based on that property, the information that would apply, but also tell them like if it's a special use permit, it's not a guaranteed use. It has to go to a public hearing. So you may look at like requesting a study period or something. So you have that period of time to ask all of those questions and look into that use being allowed or not. I think another thing worth noting too is So within Shenandoah County, we also have six incorporated towns and they control their own zoning as well. And so sometimes just because one property is zoned commercial doesn't mean that a property in Strasburg with commercial zoning has the same allowable uses as a commercially zoned property in the town of Woodstock or in Shenandoah County. Again, it helps to have those conversations up front and we'll help guide you to the right person and identify whether that business or that property is within town limits or outside so that you're having those conversations with the right individuals and starting off on the right foot. And to give you a a metric to kind of help show some how that's complicated, there's 56 different zoning districts in the county, including the town zoning districts. So it's a lot to juggle. Is your head spinning yet, Janet? I'm thinking I may stick to just drinking coffee instead of making it (laughs) intelligent. (laughs) But that's why we're here, because again, it, it can sound intimidating for somebody looking to get started, but there's people, and it's really one of the reasons why I think doing business in a community like Shenandoah County, where we're smaller, as opposed to some of these really big localities out there in Virginia, it is a more one-on-one personable experience in a place like this than you're going to get in some of those larger Northern Virginia localities or something. But you're working with a real person here that's going to help guide you through that process, as opposed to sometimes larger agencies. 
Brenna, do you work a lot with real estate agents? Because I would hope that they would at least have a basic working knowledge of what a building's capabilities are before they maybe pitch it to me to buy. Sometimes that's what makes the difference and why you choose a particular realtor maybe over another is that they're more helpful, much like what you guys are in this development review process. Certainly. Yeah. I have a great working relationship with several of the realtors in the area, some even, you know, in neighboring communities who are very familiar with our office and feel very comfortable calling and asking those questions to their client. Sometimes they'll have the clients call themselves, but it's nice when they call for them too, and they're able to gather some of that information for them. Now I need a cup of coffee. So we're going to take a break. (laughs) I'm going to brew another cup and then we'll come back and continue this conversation. Does that sound okay? Sure. Sounds great. Good. We are on the screen today with Tyler Hinkle. He is Shenandoah County's planner. We're talking about Shenandoah 2045. That is Shenandoah County's comprehensive planning process. Jenna French is joining us as well. She's director of tourism and economic development for Shenandoah County. Brenna Menifee is with us too. She is the zoning and subdivision administrator. We're going to talk more about bringing a business, starting a business, growing a business in Shenandoah County and how that factors into the larger comprehensive planning process when we come back in just a couple of minutes. Hello, I'm Katherine Dobbs, a graduating senior at Mountain Vista Governor's School, and we're partnering with the local environmental nonprofit Sustainability Matters to help you help yourself while helping the planet. Here's your sustainability tip for the day. Plant native. Virginia is home to hundreds of beautiful native plants, and they're better for the environment than non-native ornamentals are. Because they're adapted to our climate and soil, native plants require less water, fertilizer, and maintenance. So, when you're buying seeds for your garden, grab native indigo, mountain laurel, and blue-eyed grass instead of exotic flowers, invasive shrubs, or turf grass. Our native birds and insects depend on these plants for food and shelter, so think of it as making your yard into one big birdhouse. Thank you for listening. This has been an ecologically exciting message from Mountain Vista Governor School and Sustainability Matters, reminding you that together we can keep the river clean and the valley green. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Shenandoah 2045 on the screen today. That is the conversation we have every month with Tyler Hinkle. He is Shenandoah County's planner. We talk about the Shenandoah County comprehensive planning process. Jenna French is director of tourism and economic development. Brenna McMenifee is with us as well. She's zoning and subdivision administrator. So we were, when we went to break, I needed a cup of coffee because I realized that opening a coffee shop might be a little more complicated than what I see on the front facing end when I walk into one and get a cup of coffee. So my, I guess my question is, what's up with all the zoning? Why do we need it? Our current zoning map was adopted in 1978 from the planning efforts that were done 50 years ago. So 1973, when we had our first comprehensive plan adopted. Zoning is a way for the community to have a say in what it looks, feels, and is going to be in the future. And again, that's all based on the public input. It's heard from a comprehensive planning process. And it's just a way of writing the community's desires into law so that when a developer comes in or someone else were to want to develop property, they have to meet the standards the community has set forth for what it wants to be. So I come in and I want to open this coffee shop somewhere that I think would be really cool and would drive a lot of traffic, but maybe it's not the ideal spot. It's not connected to some of the public services that it's going to need to have. It makes sense. I can see where I would be annoyed. But it's the greater good. It's the greater population and citizens that have the overall say in what's going to go where. For sure. It might be that the property is for sale near the National Forest. There's not a lot of people living there, but you think it's going to be a really cool coffee place. But the locality, the community may say, we don't really want to see that type of business developed out way in the middle of nowhere. We want to see it downtown or in the center of where a bunch of people live so they can walk to it or they have access to it if they're working there. So all those factors are considered when the zoning map is drawn, but it can change. We have people who do rezoning when they want to change the zoning of the property. And when that happens, it goes back up for public hearings and the community has a say. And if that's the most proper use for that part of the county. And we've talked, Tyler, in past conversations about sprawl and how when you're doing some of these kinds of things, you're bringing in a new business or maybe it's a new housing subdivision, that you typically try to keep them close to whatever town that they're already in rather than going five, 10 miles away and out in the middle of pasture or agriculture land, you're plopping this thing 
it makes sense because that's what the people are saying they want. They want everything to be somewhat confined to make it more accessible. For sure, for sure. And I think kind of back to our TRT meetings, it's seen in those meetings as well because VDOT's going to have different regulations. If all your visitors are going to be coming in a vehicle, they're going to be accounting for more trips in your entrance. You might have to expand your entrance. Health departments can be looking at your septic system if you're not on public water and sewer. So you may not have a proper septic system to meet all the people who you want to have come there. Fire and rescue might have some more stringent requirements if you're going to be farther away from a fire station and it's going to be harder for them to be able to put out the fire if there's no fire hydrants. Not only is the zoning something that considers the distance and issues of sprawl, but I think the public services that are going to service that business, residents or, or anything like that, also take into impact how far away you are from everything else that the community centers in the county. That's a really good point, though, because I think our comprehensive plan, is, at least as it stands right now, the current plan says we want to see the growth in and around the towns. And that's one, to help preserve the rural nature of our community, but also because that's where the infrastructure is that can help accommodate these mm -hmm. and to have the available utility that you would need to serve a more commercial business. Oftentimes, you're not going to have those available or you don't have a roadway that is adequate to serve increased traffic out in the more remote parts of the county as well. Not to say that those changes couldn't be made if a rezoning took place. But again, through that process, if you're going to have to rezone, you'll end up having to look at all of those things that would need to be done to accommodate that. And those are all things that I wouldn't necessarily, as somebody who's looking to open this coffee shop, I wouldn't think of. Tyler, when you mentioned fire and rescue services, that's not usually top of mind with a business owner because they're thinking, I need square footage and I need the physical things for my business. And then I need the customers. They're not thinking about all of the other things sometimes that go into getting that business physically open. So it really does make sense that you have this development review process that I can come to and get that information on the front end before I make a major investment on the back end and find out it's not really going to work the way that I want. Yeah. And sometimes going through that process every now and then we have a business that walks away or a prospective business that walks away and says, you know what? Yeah. Now that I've gotten all this information, I realized that this property that I was looking at maybe wasn't the best fit. Although sometimes that's difficult, that can also be considered a win too, because we never want to see somebody make a huge investment and then not be successful with it. So in those types of situations, again, that's where our staff comes in handy that maybe this property wasn't the right fit because you found out there was gonna need to be too much investment upfront to make that happen, but we can work with you to help find you the right property that may be more conducive for what you're looking at doing. Do you have these meetings every single month, same date and time? Do I, as a business owner, need to call you and say, hey, I'd like to attend? What does that look like? It starts usually with a conversation with our zoning administrator, with Brenna, talking about the, your business idea to see, is it an allowed use? Is this the best place for it? What's the process to do it? And then we would work with that business owner to schedule the next meeting. And it would be the next one uh, that month or the following month. But yes, we have them every month and it's open to any business who wants to use it. Brenna, in a perfect world, all small businesses, medium businesses, large businesses would start with you. <laughs> they would call you before they do anything and say, hey, I'm thinking about opening a coffee shop in Shenandoah County. What do I need to know? And then you ask them the questions that maybe they hadn't even thought of the answers for yet. Yes, definitely. We do hear from a lot of businesses in our office and we are generally their first stop or if they've stopped at some other office in the county. For example, a huge misconception is business licenses. So a lot of times people will come into the county building or call because they're just looking to obtain their business license for the county, not realizing that they probably need to talk with me first because the county does not have a business license at all, but there are other steps that we'll probably need to take. So that kind of brings them in the office sometimes, but then we can continue that conversation to help point them in the right direction. And that makes sense because as you mentioned earlier, you've got Strasburg and Tomsbrook and Newmarket, and you've got all of these other localities that within the county have their own set of standards and their own zoning laws. Yep, very much so. I don't know how you keep it all in your head. You probably drink lots of coffee. So will you be a customer <laughs> in my new coffee shop? <laughs> I do. I'm still sipping on a coffee. <laughs> Yes, we do get, we get a high volume of calls, as you can imagine, from people just looking for residential use and then, of course, the businesses as well. 
So before we wrap up, Tyler and I have started asking guests to bring out their crystal ball and look into the future because this is a big deal that you're planning for 2045. So let's start there. In a perfect world, what would you like the county to look like? I'll start with you, Jen. I'll put you on the spot first. What would you like the county in a perfect world to look like in 2045? Yeah, thanks for that, Janet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky I like you. Gosh, it's so hard to predict. I do think based on what I hear now from residents in our community, I anticipate that we'll continue to see some growth in and around our towns. We already see residential development on the books for places like Strasburg and Woodstock in particular. And I think that's important that we have some of that residential growth, even though I know that sometimes it's seen as unpopular, but our businesses also need that in order to grow and thrive and have the workforce that they need to support that. So I think we are going to continue to see some growth in those areas. And I hope that we continue to see some additional industrial growth. But from our standpoint with economic development, my hope for the future is that we have a really diversified business base. We have a mix of manufacturing and healthcare and IT and small business growth and tourism business growth and agritourism. And we see our agricultural sector also continue to grow and thrive. And that it's that diversity within our community that is critical. So even though, yes, my role is economic development and people tend to think of just large industry and manufacturing, for Shenandoah County, I think it's important that that is a piece of our pie, but it's not the whole pie and that the majority of our county continue to maintain that rural character. But we find areas where it makes sense to help develop the type of growth that people want to continue to see here. Brenna, from a zoning and subdivision perspective, in a perfect world, how do you think that's going to look in 2045? Yeah, so ironically, I grew up in a suburb just outside of a very large city, and I remember being a child and seeing the the farms and the cows, and as I got older, no longer saw any of those, and if I were to go back there and visit today, I wouldn't even recognize it. There's not a single cow in that whole suburb, I'm sure. I would hope in zoning, I can help enforce code and the comprehensive plan in a way that my children when they're older, can still see those farms that I didn't get to see when I grew up. And I hope that they can continue to see that here. If that is the wishes of the comprehensive plan and the people who've helped write it, then that's something that I can help ensure we always have. Tyler, I think that's something important too. Brenna makes a really good point in that sometimes you really do have to look to the past and what you grew up with and what was important and good for you in your life then to decide whether that's something you want to see more of as you're moving into the future and then figure out how to bring those two things back together. Absolutely. I think that's something that's in a mindset for all our citizen advisory committee members and everyone who's working on the conference plan that past is preface, that we're going to look to the past as a way to better understand what our future is going to look like. We talked in our last conversation, too, about the fact that this is 50 years. You're celebrating 50 years since the first comprehensive plan. Are we going to be in flying cars, do you think, Jenna, in 50 more years? (laughs) Are we going to be the Jetsons and zoning won't matter anymore? (laughs) It'll be air patterns? Yeah, you know, I think that technology is rapidly changing, and so... It's hard to predict what that is going to look like down the road. I laugh, though, because I got an email not that long ago that actually kind of touched on some of that stuff. So who knows? It just in the last few years, we've continued to see, especially around vehicles, that is constantly evolving. So if I had my crystal ball, I probably would not be sitting in this position. I would be sitting cushy somewhere else. Who knows what it holds? But I do think we're going to see the technology continue to evolve more and more rapidly as we move into the future. And Brenna, I would imagine technology is going to play a huge role 50 years from now in how you do what you do, just from a visual perspective and from an ease of use for the people that are looking to move here and start businesses or move here and live here. Technology is going to play a huge role in that in the next 50 years. I would absolutely think so. I think in addition to the way my job will be done in regards to that, people are always coming up with new innovative uses and ways of doing things that we have to continue to adapt to and figure out our processes regarding all those new uses because it seems like those people are coming up with new things all the time. I think that's one thing like we we often see in economic development is sometimes we'll get a lead from a business that is 
on the cusp of new cutting edge technology or a new type of industry. And it wasn't a part of our existing zoning because it didn't exist 10 years ago when the zoning code was written. And so working with Brenna's office to see where it fits in. And then as we go through and we update zoning to stay current with those changes. Data centers wasn't a thing when our zoning code was originally written. And look at that now. Sometimes you can't predict the future and you don't know how to write in those things, but we want to work with businesses when they come in and try to find ways to make it work. And Jana, I think you make a good point too on how technology will change because 50 years ago, I think our zoning map was a paper map colored with crayons. <laughs> and now it's online interactive map. So who knows what it could be in, okay. in 50 years. You guys really have to walk a fine line between being fortune tellers and looking into the future and at the same time being historians and taking care of the history in the past and also making sure that it's represented as we move into the future. So I'm glad y'all have your jobs and I'm just somebody that talks on the radio. We're glad you have your job because it helps <laughs> us tell our story and get word out there for the public. Thank you guys for taking some time to chat with me today. This has been fun as usual. I appreciate your insight. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I will be back tomorrow. It is Tourism Tuesday, and last week I headed over to the Winchester Frederick County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Really got to talk to Justin about shortening that name and had a conversation with Justin Kern. So meet me back here for that tomorrow, just a few minutes after noon.